Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, and please try to set, finish the rosary on your own. I don't see a candor. I don't know who's there.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We got a little reminder this morning that winter was coming, I guess, huh? After a few damp and warm days. This morning, as we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first call to mind our sins, and we ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, teacher of justice, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, bearer of mercy, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, on earth peace to people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, with, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan, if you ever wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, love you, Lord my, strength. my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I, I love, love you, you Lord, Lord, my strength. My strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, I love Lord, you, Lord, my strength. My strength. <laughs> the Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior, you who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, I love Lord, you, Lord my, strength. my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit 
so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Your blessing, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, what commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. talked about this at Daily Mass before, but I don't think we've gotten to it on a Sunday since I've been back here. And it's surprising because this gospel is one that is so well known and so often quoted. The greatest commandment, or in this case, the commandments. The law of Jesus that doesn't discard all the other laws of God, but boils them down to their most basic components and exposes their foundations. And Jesus says as much at the end of the reading. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Loving God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. This is an ancient commandment. This is a commandment of the Israelite people. It comes from the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy, the Shema Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is Lord alone. This statement is so central to who they are, and by extension, to who we are as a people. They are told to inscribe this verse on their hearts, to place it on their doorpost, to tie it around their wrists, to have it in front of their eyes. And many do. In true Orthodox Jewish households, this passage will be placed in little mezuzahs and attached to the doorposts of homes. It's worn in small pouches on wrists, known as phylacteries, and that's meant to be carried as a reminder of their central devotion to God with them at all times. They tie it to their foreheads as they pray. Now, while we may not do this as Christians and as Catholics in the physical sense, our commitment to these words 
Our commitment should be no less central to who we are. Should be, our commitment should, should be no less real. And what is required to love God? Prayer, worship, faith, commitment. But that's not enough. The second commandment gives us how we are to practice the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. This was the message of the prophets to God's people, who constantly entered into the society of the Israelites as messengers from God, messengers that brought uncomfortable messages to them. Stop being unfaithful. Stop being cruel to one another. Stop taking advantage of those around you, your immorality, your greediness. And don't just stop. Convert. Convert your hearts to love. Take care of the sick, the poor, the widow. If you, not, if you do not, you're committing an offense, not just against one another, but against God. That's why these two great commandments are really one in their complete interconnectedness. Failing at either one fails at both, and it works both ways. For a Christian to love and serve neighbor must also be in the context of the love of God. There are many in this world who serve others, who feed the hungry, who care for the sick, who bury the dead, protect the vulnerable, many who are not part of our faith. And why do they do so? They have good intentions. The natural law we believe is there. And if you were to ask someone who doesn't do it in the context of faith why they do the things that they would do, they would tell you, probably, that it's the right thing to do. There are wonderful and giving people out there who do the right thing every day, sometimes even more than some of those who claim to be Christian. So this isn't about questioning their motive. However, for us, is saying it's the right thing to do enough? How do we know what is the right thing? If the world is random and chaotic, how is right and wrong determined? Without guidance, without a foundation, so often, unfortunately, even good motivations without proper perspective, without, without a foundation, they can lead in directions that are no longer grounded, no longer right. Without an understanding of the human person and human rights and dignity, both of individuals and the community, as coming from and belonging to God, the desire to do what's right can, and sometimes does, lose its way. Being that it's Respect Life Month, there are a few examples that I could give you about this. For example, most who advocate for something like abortion, they believe, they, they believe that they're doing it for the right reasons. They recognize the difficult situations of some parents and families. They recognize the sovereignty of individual choice, the complications of unwanted children in a society that doesn't have the resources to take care of them, and they see this as a viable means of alleviating or avoiding these concerns because there's no understanding of the divine origin and nature of human life, of our lack of authority to have dominion over that life. The same can be said for something like euthanasia, which many see as a way to alleviate suffering, to give people back a semblance of control over their lives by giving them the means to end it with a perceived dignity. But it's also truly an action of hopelessness of despair in a society that has lost its ability to unite individual suffering to the redemptive suffering of the cross and also doesn't know how to take care of those who suffer either. There's no understanding of that slippery slope of despair that this can have on the community. This lack of a divine perspective extends to the ambitious impulses in a capitalistic society that ends up turning to greed or materialism or the misguided egalitarianism, Italian, egalitarianism, I can really talk English, I really can, of socialism that can lead to a cold and utilitarian vision of judging worth by determining a person's usefulness in society. It's the impulse to spread a love that doesn't require speaking the truth, because sometimes the truth hurts and it's uncomfortable. The greatest commandments are inseparable, because to love God requires real action. But that action must always be rooted in faith and an understanding of the God whom that action truly serves. It is complicated, it's difficult, and exactly what Jesus is calling us to. 
These greatest commandments are nowhere near as simple as they sound. And actually, even though Jesus says so, they aren't actually finished at two. There's that little reference but final piece of the second commandment that's important, that's perhaps the most difficult for us, where it says to love your neighbor as yourself. Healthy self-worth is not selfish. When we look at our neighbor as God's individual and unique creation, our vision of them will not be clear unless we can recognize that's also how God looks at us. You know, in the old Baltimore Catechism that many of you learned when you were kids, although those who were my generation and younger didn't, but that's okay. You remember it for its series of questions and answers that it had. One of the first questions in there was, who made you? And the answer was, God made me. So yes, absolutely, and that is so important, and it must be established. We must come to terms with the truth, with grace, with humility, over the gifts that we have been given by God, and that we are given to serve God. That question then had a follow-up. That follow-up was just as important, and it connects to the gospel today. It said, why did God make you? The answer, God made me to know him, to love him, to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him forever in the next. Another great answer. But how do we do that? It sounds easy, but it's really not. How we do it, how we answer or how we live out the answer to that question is this. You shall love your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And together we pray and profess our faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we rejoice that God will strengthen our faith and send us as messengers to share Christ's love with all in need. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and those chosen to lead us, that they may serve as exemplary models of care for the least among us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For patient peacemakers and negotiators, compassionate leaders and honest lawmakers, may they lead us with courage through natural disasters, elections in this pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an appreciation of the gift of creation, may we use its resources rightly and be wise stewards of its abundance, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For courage and peace to share Jesus' love with the world during this Respect Life Month, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, may we grow in faith, hope, and love through deeper devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Holy Rosary during this month, dedicated to the Most Holy Rosary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the patience, vigilance, and understanding necessary to keep us safe during this current surge of COVID-19. May God bring an end to the pandemic, health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, and comfort to families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the loving service of God and neighbor, that they may be forever in God's love. We remember Rosemarie Kea, Kevin Senzi, John Drusbaki, Peter Antonellis, Catherine Watkins, Stanislawa Wisbicki, Patricia Talone, Joseph Cupo, Joseph Paparella, Brian O'Donnell, and Doris Radis, who recently died, and we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. At this Mass, we remember Henry Wysick and Emma Mischlick, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have asked us for our prayers and for the intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, increase in us your gifts of love and charity. Strengthen us to follow your commands that our lives may bear witness to your mercy and grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the may Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of my hands the for the praise and glory of his name, name for, for our good and the good of all his holy, holy church. church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, host, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And the mystery of faith, save us, Savior Savior of the the world, world. for by your cross and resurrection resurrection, you you have have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gregory the Great and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, 
Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, word and, my and my soul, soul shall be healed. I invite those at home unable to receive Holy Communion to join me in reciting the spiritual communion prayer found on the parish website. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We once again ask your patience and cooperation during the distribution of Holy Communion at the end of Mass. Please remain in your seats until the usher directs you to the back of the church to either exit or to receive Communion. 
While in line, we ask you to maintain a social distance between you and the person in front of you. You are encouraged to receive communion in the hand. When you arrive at the communion station, please lower your mask, hold out your hands and receive the host from the priest or deacon. Place the host in your mouth and finally replace the mask before exiting the church. And we ask you to please do not congregate or stop in the gathering space, but rather go directly to your cars. And if you are not participating in the online collection, please drop off your weekly offering in the baskets in the gathering space. Your continued support of the church is most appreciative. And the current information and events, as well as the weekly bulletin, can be found in the parish website. As I say every week, please do so, because there are a lot of things going on now, um, but we have, we're not announcing them all at Mass. The one thing is, is that we are starting 7 a.m. Mass again during the week, starting tomorrow morning. I said it's because the priests are, are sleeping in too much in the rectory, so I needed to get them up earlier, but <laughs> other than that. So. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.